Either because you want to feel more confident when choosing a wine bottle at the liquor store or the restaurant, you want to build a career in the wine, hospitality or gastronomy industry, you like to cook and you want to learn how to choose the wine that goes best with your dishes. You are one of those who believe that a glass of wine a day could bring health benefits. Wine is one of your hobbies or you just want to extend the range of conversations with your family and friends. Whatever the reason, this video is for you. Stay tuned until the end and in a few minutes, you will begin to develop the criteria to know your palate. Because only then, you will be able to select good wines without breaking your bank account. Let's start with the basics. Let's learn how to taste wine. In this episode, we will concentrate on the colors and aromas of the wine. We will analyze in detail the first two phases of the wine evaluation process. In the next episode, we will complete the process with the last two steps, analyzing our sensory impressions to describe, evaluate and judge the wine. The first phase is the visual. After opening the bottle and serving the wine, we take the glass by the stem or base to avoid heating the wine. Then, we tilt the glass about 45 degrees on a white background to observe the color, which will give us an idea of the age of the wine, the type of grape, or the potential of aging the bottle in your cellar. Each type of grape has its particular tones and colors. For example, a Cabernet Sauvignon will be darker and more intense than a Pinot Noir. Generally, in red wine, the more ruby or cherry and bright, the wine is younger. If the color is more garnet or brick with orange tones, it is usually an older wine. Additionally, during the visual stage, we can observe the density of the wine. The higher the density, the higher the alcohol concentration. If we move the wine slightly through the glass, we will observe how the tears or legs fall. The thicker and more dense the legs, likely the more alcohol or residual sugar contained in the wine. It is very common for people to define the viscosity or density of wine as legs or tears, and many associate them with the quality of the wine. But the reality is that good legs are related to the alcohol content and the natural glycerin in wine. Although, it is also true that if your friends consume too much wine, they will probably begin to see you better legs. In conclusion, with wine as with people, there is very little meaningful information that can be deduced by looking at the legs. In white wines, we also look at their color to get clues about the type of grape. For example, Chardonnay has more golden hue, while a Sauvignon Blanc has a pale yellow color and is much lighter than a Chardonnay. According to their evolution level, the range of colors of white wines can be pale yellow with greenish tones, straw yellow, yellowish gold, old gold, yellow with brown tones, or brown. The darkening of white wines is due to oxidation by heat, light exposure, or evolution in the absence of oxygen. It could also be due to contact with wood during the aging process. Greenish hues generally reveal more acidity. A pale white, very bright, will be a younger wine coming from cold areas. A white wine that appears denser when pouring in the glass is likely to come from warmer climates. Likewise, a dessert wine is more dense because of the high concentration of residual sugar. The pulp of the grapes used to make wine is mostly light yellow color. The pigmentation of the wine comes from contact with the skin during the winemaking process. Therefore, the rosé wine color will depend on the grapes used and the time it has been left in contact with the skin during maceration. The longer the contact time, the darker the color of the rosé wine will be. In the case of sparkling wines, during this phase we will observe the bubbles. The size of the bubbles is important since it will vary according to the fermentation method used. And in some cases, the size will give clues about the quality of the wine. In a quality sparkling wine, the bubbles must be fine, slowly rising and must form what is known as rosaries, a continuous thread of rising bubbles. On the surface, we will appreciate the formation of crowns or lace, which is nothing more than a group of bubbles that form various shapes on the wine's surface. We will also observe its persistence, that is, we will evaluate how long the bubbles last. 
Now, let's move on to the next phase. Without moving the wine, we put our nose in the glass and smell. Then, swirl the glass slightly so that the wine comes into contact with the oxygen. This will allow the wine to open and help intensify the aroma. Finally, with the nose inside the glass, we smell to assess the bouquet. We identify the intensity of the aroma while answering if it's delicate, moderate or vigorous. We will also ask ourselves if aromas imparted by the wood are present, which will help us to identify if the wine was aged in an oak barrels or not. Even with a little practice, you could even tell if American or French oak was used, or if the barrel was new or recycled. In general, the aromas imparted by oak could vary between smoked, roasted wood, incense or resins. If the wine has aged in barrels recycled for several years, you could smell musty. French barrels provide the wine with aromas of nuts, honey, tobacco, spices and balsamic, while American barrels provide aromas such as cocoa, coconut, coffee, cream or vanilla. Among the typical aromas in white wines we can identify citrus aromas such as lemon, lime, grapefruit or orange, tree fruits such as apple, pear, peach, apricot, fig or walnuts, tropical fruits such as melon, pineapple, banana or mango, floral aromas such as orange blossom, honeysuckle or jasmine, herbs such as grass, green vegetables, mint or dill, mineral aromas stone, damp earth or mushroom, spices such as cinnamon, pepper or nutmeg, or aromas of the oak like caramel or vanilla. The common aromas that we can identify in a glass of red wine we can highlight. Red fruits such as strawberry, raspberry, blackberry, cherry, blueberry, cassis or plum. Nuts such as raisins or prunes. Herbs and vegetables such as paprika, eucalyptus or mint. Floral aromas such as violet, lilac, lavender or roses, earth like mushrooms, truffles or fresh asphalt, spices such as cinnamon, pepper, anise or cloves, or other aromas such as chocolate, coffee, leather, smoke or tobacco. In the case of sparkling wines, you might appreciate the aromas of vegetables or yeast. If they're aged wines, you might notice smells like bakery, cakes or butter. By nature, the human nose is capable of distinguishing thousands of different smells, but at the end, it is the brain that is responsible for filtering, recognizing and judging sensory impressions. That is why it is essential to develop an awareness of those impressions, storing them in the brain, so we can get the ability to discover and describe them. There are kits designed to help you build these olfactory memories in your mind. However, you could also create them using fresh fruits and groceries. When I started in the fascinating world of wines, my brain was more familiar with the aromas of tropical fruits, such as pineapple, orange, lemon or banana, for example. Therefore, I had to go to the supermarket to buy fruits or spices I was less familiar with. Then, I made a kind of puree and kept them in the fridge to smell from time to time to build sensory memory in my brain. Observing and smelling the wine are useful tools for those expert sommeliers who undergo blind wine tastings in which they most discover what wine they have in the glass, although many find them not very useful for social or family events. It could be interesting to organize wine challenge with your family or friends to have fun and different time. Likewise, these two phases are very important to evaluate the expressiveness of the wine. That is to analyze if the aromas and colors are well defined and clearly projected. Some wines appear mute, confused and fuzzy, while others express their bouquet with clarity and focus. In my opinion, whether a wine is expressive or not is just one more characteristic. It should not be a reason to disqualify a wine. It would be like rejecting a book because it's not long enough or rejecting a piece of music because it's not good for dancing. In the same way, these two phases will help evaluate the varietal character and the connectivity, which implies analyzing if a particular wine presents the aromas and flavors inherent to the grape it contains, 
or if it has a connection or link with the plot of land on which it was grown. Something similar to cultural identity allows one thing to be different from another and therefore worth appreciating. This attribute is perhaps difficult to determine since it requires a lot of practice. But don't worry, winetuber, don't be scared. This is how each video in the new wine university section on this channel will help you during the process of understanding each wine and each wine region. Each grape has its particular aromas. Now, I will describe the smells that you can find in some of the most common grapes, such as Chardonnay presents aromas of apple, lemon, pear, tropical fruits, some spices or caramel. If oak has been used, you might appreciate aromas of vanilla, honey or butter. The Sauvignon Blancs exhibits aromas of citrus fruit, pineapple, melon, white roses, grass, parsley, peppers, jalapenos, olives, asparagus, or something that does not sound attractive such as the aroma of cat pee, so common in the wines produced with Sauvignon Blanc that is even already accepted as valid. Cabernet Sauvignon presents aromas of dark fruits such as blackberry, dark cherry, cases, or others such as eucalyptus, chocolate, and tobacco. The Malbec grape has aromas of cherries, plums, coffee, chocolate, leather, truffle, raisins, or damp earth, among others. Vanilla appears when it passes through oak barrels. Tempranillo shows aromas of red fruits such as cherry, strawberry, raspberry, as well as vanilla or tobacco. Merlot displays aromas such as cases, blackberry, or other red fruits, sweet paprika, small violet, or leather. Pinot Noir tend to have aromas of leather or red fruits, such as cherry, raspberry, and strawberry. Sangiovese wines often have aromas of cherries, herbs, tea leaves, earthy aromas, and leather. Syrah or Shiraz will present aromas of tobacco, pepper, blackberry, and smoke, among others. Garnacha shows aromas of strawberry, wild fruits, cherries, walnuts, leather, cases, or pepper. Sinfandel would present aromas of cherry, pepper, mixed spices, mint, or anise. Well, dear wine tuber, you have already started the path to becoming a wine expert in the next video. We will cover the last two phases of this process. The enjoyment of wine is tied to many variables, and that is where your aptitude as an enthusiast will help you make the most of the knowledge you will learn in this channel. Thank you for boarding with us around the world. Cheers and salute!